Hi everyone, let's talk about Pandemic Rising Tide. So, I love Pandemic to start with. You know, if you've seen some of my many videos about the various versions of Pandemic, I really, really like, you know, the legacy versions, the standard version and all the various expansions for it. I think the only one I haven't played is the Cthulhu one, but yeah, I am on board for you know, a lot of the stuff that Pandemic does. And I really enjoyed Iberia. You know, this is part of a series. It's called the Survival Series. These are limited editions. I'm not sure how limited they are, but they are special versions of Pandemic that are put out for the championships they have. The World Championships are in a certain place. So, you know, it's in, it was in the Netherlands uh, last year. This came out at the very end of last year. So it was in the Netherlands last year. So this is a special version for that country. And I I thought this with Iberia as well. It it really, really, you know, these do stand, stand alone for on Pandemic. It really, really changes it up. You know, you are still curing diseases in Iberia. Here, you are doing a completely different thing. And that that is a little bit of a, I have seen a few couple of people mention, and, and Rachel thought as well, actually, that, you know, this isn't Pandemic anymore. You know, this is so far away from it. This is a different game that's, you know, a, a kind of, you know, a very vaguely similar thing. I, I still, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm still kind of analogizing in my head that like, okay, this, they, we're in the infection step, you know, pl do four actions, draw two cards. You know, it, I suppose it depends on where your your definition of pandemic lies, really. You know, because I suppose we aren't uh, solving a pandemic, are we? But anyway, this game, I really, really love it. I think it's fantastic. This is, uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed Iberia, but this is... Yeah, this is something special. The just just from the fact the the very simple thing of water flows is one of the things that really makes it for me. The the kind of it, it's not unpredictable, but it's it's hard to kind of visualize. It it does it does pre present some problems because there's a lot of kind of there's a, there's more admin in the game because you know uh, is the, is this region bordering this region? Okay, there's three in this. Okay, check all of these regions. Now there's two in this one. Check all of these regions. There's a little bit more, you know, to to do turn to turn, especially if things are changing a lot. If you if you're on top of things, I suppose it's not changing as much. But uh, yeah, it can lead to some really really big surprises that that again shouldn't be surprises. You should be able to predict these things, or I suppose you can't predict the cards that come out, but you can kind of predict that. Okay, we left this entire middle place completely empty. There are no dikes anywhere in there, so. Any little thing that goes wrong in there is really, really going to make us suffer. I really, really like that system. And just, just the thing as well of trying to keep up with putting these dikes down, you know, as, as quickly as you can put them up, the, the sea is just uh, completely getting rid of them. So I mentioned in the playthrough as well that I haven't won this so far, and yeah, it's never gone as abysmally as it did in the playthrough. I made some terrible decisions there, and hopefully had some bad luck as well. Hopefully it's not just uh, that I'm awful at it. But yeah, it's it's been harder in my experience, a lot harder than uh, than Pandemic, but yeah, it may be down to just not thinking in the right way yet, not uh, not converting to thinking about this uh, this water thing. Because, you know, in Pandemic, you are thinking about, you know, how the diseases can spread. You know, if there's three cubes in a region, then all of the infection cubes will be put in regions adjacent to it, and you can kind of see the spread from that. Here, it's not as extreme as that. Bad things do happen if there are more than three water cubes to be put into a region, but you have to think not just when uh yeah you know the not just what in that case i can't remember the word in uh, pandemic now for when they overflow but uh yeah it's every single turn there's going to be this water flow step and there are not that many water cubes you know, it's it does seem like a lot to begin with and especially as you get later on into the game you know it's uh it, it seems it seems like it's going well. You've maybe got uh, three of the hydraulic structures on and things are starting to look up. When when you start drawing more cards, you know, that's always a worry in normal pandemic as well. But then more cubes get put into the sea. And that's not uh, that's not too bad because it's only, you know, it's only one more cube in each of the seas. But that means that anywhere that's not protected that's next to the sea now is now getting two cubes in it rather than one. And then there's, you know, a, a, a domino effect that it's going to affect all of the regions that water was leaking into. And then when there's four in there, even worse. The I didn't really get to show off some of the special abilities of the hydraulic structures because I failed so quickly. But uh, the, the purple one turns the pronunciation, Zuidazi, 
into a region which you can then do things with that's you know adjacent to the Nord Sea, so water can still get into it and stuff. No, I think it acts as a dam actually. But yeah, you can clear this out and you know go in there and have less to worry about. That's not going to affect regions as much anymore. Yeah, you know, there's still a sea that's uh, there to worry about. It's freeing up queues because you don't have to put them in there anymore as the standard thing for when the the sea levels rise. But yeah, that, that can really free things up. They do very different things, all of the hydraulic structures. And then on top of all of this, you know, this, this core game I really, really enjoy and I'm really excited about. But then the thing, if you, uh, if you haven't seen the playthrough, if you skip to the end, it's, it's not very long. I, I lost it very quickly. But uh, yeah, there are these objective cards in there for a variable setup. So instead of your objective being build all of the four hydraulic structures, there are these different cards for each colour. You shuffle each colour together and draw a card. Your objective may well be, you know, build this structure and then you might have a little uh, a little description on top. There's no, there's no extra stuff. The card is just build the hydraulic structure. But you may have cards, and I went into it in more detail in the video, but have a certain number of population. Population comes into it then. There are people to look after and put in these regions or build pumping stations or have no water cubes in these certain regions. You, know, it's not necessar you can still build the hydraulic structures, but it's not necessarily the be-all and end-all. It's going to have... Uh, your your game is going to have a particular flavor based on the combination of these objectives that came out and you can have more than just the base four uh, as well as the standard pandemic thing of in increasing the number of these cards you know epidemic cards in normal pandemic storm cards in rising tide you can increase them just the same to increase your difficulty but there is also a nice table there is actually a little uh Oh, that's for their population loss and a little setup summary. But there's a nice table in the rule book, which again I showed at the end of the playthrough, where you can combine, you know, the, the, there's a name for each of the levels of difficulty depending on how many objective cards you wanted to use and how many storm cards you wanted to use. So, yeah, the, you can really, really turn things up in there. But I am not, uh, I'm clearly, clearly nowhere near ready for that. But still, despite uh, my my lack of ability whatsoever in this game, I have really, really enjoyed it. And I, I said uh, for Pandemic Iberia, that that's somewhere, that's that's there still. Uh, I still uh, think that that's that can stand beside Pandemic as its own experience, and I liked it enough on its own to want to keep it. Absolutely, even more so for this. I think this is really, really fantastic. Maybe. This is going to be one of those times where I'm embarrassed and I'm, I make a really basic mistake in the game and that's why I'm finding it so hard. But uh, yeah, those those things aren't too terrible because it will uh, fix how I play the game for me. But either way, if, if I'm just bad at it for now, then I'm perfectly willing to work on that and try and get better at this because I've really enjoyed my times even though they have been crushing losses. And uh, yeah, you can watch the playthrough and decide for yourself if you would like to give it a try. But that's Pandemic Rising Tide. Thanks a lot for watching everyone and I'll see you for the next game. Bye.